Hi, I'm Aprajita Jain and welcome to our third episode of Art Insider. Today we speak to collectors of Indian modern and contemporary art. Each one of our collectors comes from very different backgrounds and pursue various kinds of careers. I'm very excited to know their individual tastes and what dictates their collections. Our first guest today is Mr. Malvinder Singh, chairperson Fortis Healthcare. After having lost his father at a very early age, he was thrust into the world of high pressure business and went on to creating one of India's largest healthcare institutions. But today, we speak to the art lover, Mr. Singh. Can you tell us a little bit about how your art experience began? It really started with Dad's interest in art and uh, he would visit artists, uh, he became friends with some of them, he would go to their homes, uh, go and uh, you know, take us to various exhibitions, uh, have them come over and it was a friendship and a conversation around art uh, which really got him into buying art at that point in time while we were teenagers and uh, through that you know one heard, one listened, uh, one learned and gradually began to like uh, some of those pieces and some of the artists. And I think my initial journey of wanting to collect art actually started with those artists that Dad liked. Uh, and my first piece, uh, or rather our first piece that uh, we picked up was when our daughter was born in the year 2000, and that was Hussein. Uh, we picked it up, uh, you know, I mean, at that time Hussein to us was, you know, the best artist you know, the best, you know, you, if you had it, Hussein, it was like, wow, you know, you've, you've got it. And that's how we started. Uh, but I think over, over a period of time, uh, we saw more, we learned more, our eyes evolved. And for, and for me and Japna, it's, it's, it's been a joint journey of, uh, of really building our collection and evolving it. And, uh, you know, going through different phases of how we've gone about collecting art. And uh, we've also encouraged our children uh, as, as a part of the journey, uh, you know, to, to do what our parents did with us. Uh, so it's really something within the family which each of us enjoy. And it's, and it's a collective journey that uh, we take when it comes to collecting and building art and, you know, going to museums and uh, just trying to do what I learned from my parents. So you're known to be buying very expensive works at auctions and sometimes breaking uh, record prices. Tell us about your favorite purchase and an anecdote maybe with one of them. I think it's about buying what you like. Uh, it's not that much about price, yes, but uh, when you know, your eye <laughs> evolves to like some of the better or the best pieces, there seem to be a lot more people interested in that piece. Uh, but for us, I think we've, over the last many years, picked up some very fine works of many of the leading artists. So it's a mix between contemporaries and also the moderns. Uh, and I think our collection has a mix of both of them. Uh, but uh, I would certainly say that uh, I think we are happy with where our collection has evolved to. And our intent would be to continue to evolve it and build it and ensure that, you know, we've got uh, you know, probably the better pieces of uh, the different periods of many of the artists. I think it's a little difficult to say which is the best piece or the better pieces because everybody will look at it differently. But at least from our perspective, uh, I think we really enjoyed uh, what we've what we've bought, and uh, we like to live with it. Your top three works in your collection. That's tough. That is a tough one. But I think, let me, let me say to you like this, uh, if you look at the moderns, uh, between Guy Tunde, between, between Tayyab, uh, I think those would be my top two from uh, a viewpoint of the moderns. In terms of contemporaries, uh, Atul Dodia, uh, Subodh, Bharti, uh, Arpita, I think we have some of their best works as well. Uh, what about, some, someone once told me that there were lots of, conversations one had over green tea and your guy Tunde. It's actually the piece which is in this room, not in the frame at this point. Yes. Uh, so every day in the evening, uh, you know, when I would come back, I would sit here in this room, uh, enjoy my Chinese tea, and just keep, you know, enjoying looking at that work. 
uh, and it gives me peace, uh, it gives me tranquility uh, and uh, I see different hues and colours in that piece uh, many times that I look at it. So truly living with it? I do. I, I enjoy Guy Tunde's works. Do you feel attached to your works? I love my works and, I, and they make my house complete. So how has your art buying evolved over the years? I think uh, our taste has evolved considerably and I think what we've enjoyed and what we like has also evolved uh, from right from you know, where we were to where we are now. At that point in time, I think it was more driven by, I would say, uh, landscapes. Hmm. It was a lot more about having portraits and I quite didn't uh, appreciate the abstract part of art at that point in time. Uh, but over the last two decades, uh, I would certainly say, and more in particular over the last five, six years, my eye has evolved to a point where I enjoy abstract personally a lot more. Uh, and you know, each time you look at some of those abstract pieces, uh, you see different things. You see the painting talking to you in different, um, just saying different things to you. And you see different aspects of that painting. Uh, and that's something I think which I actually enjoy a lot more today. So I find it a lot more easier to live with abstract art around me uh, than portraits or landscapes. If there was advice that we'd ask you to give our viewers, can you give us three tips that they should have or they should consider before they buy? I mean, at least for, for, for me what works is uh, what I like instantly. Uh, so it's not looking at art, you know, don't look at it and say, look, you're buying this piece uh, and you know it's at price X and you know will it go to price Y or price Z because uh, that's the wrong way of doing it. Uh, buy art because you enjoy it, you want to live with it, you want to have it permanently in your home or in your office or wherever you'd like to keep it uh, and uh, it should be able to relate to you and talk to you. So just don't buy it to, uh, to fill space on a wall but buy it because it means something to you, because it completes your home and there's a story around it. Our second guest on the show today is Mr. Ajay P. Ramal, Chairman, the P. Ramal Group. Coming from a prominent business family, which has diverse business interests, from pharma to real estate development. Last year, he opened the P. Ramal Art Museum and has plans to open multiple more spaces in Bombay. To hear about his vision, let's speak to the man himself. Our journey actually began as a personal collection and it started by uh, buying a few odd pieces of art in, in the 80s and in the 90s, but it was not a substantial collection. It really started becoming a greater interest sometime in the mid-2000s and uh, we started buying more art, I started looking at different uh, artists and also somewhere raise the quality of art that we were buying and that's how that journey uh, started and now it's becoming like much more of a passion if I may say so. Your family has a really robust legacy of over a hundred years. What is your vision for India's cultural legacy in the future? I think my family of hundred years is nothing compared to what the legacy, the cultural legacy of our country is. To me, India has the richest cultural legacy of any country in the world. And therefore, whatever we can do to actually spread this and to make everybody aware of it, I think it's an obligation that uh, we all as Indians have. Not only uh, is it to our own countrymen, but even to outside this world. I think one of the things our viewers would love to know is how do you go about selecting a piece of work? So my uh, is simple. At first, it should be an art a piece which I really enjoy and which I would like to see. I think it must give a joy to you and it should, give, it should touch your heart. There should be something that is in that a piece of work which really strikes a chord with you. I think that's most important. I believe that the art which we select should have 
value in terms of aesthetic value over decades and therefore it's the good art which makes a difference you know sometimes you get into fads and they may be good they're good for a few months good for a few years but would they stand the test of time i don't think so so i like to buy art which would stand the test of time so it comes to the second question uh, on this thought is that do you view art as an investment so i have never viewed art as an investment though i believe also on to the contrary is that art if you buy good art over time it will be a good investment because in terms of high quality of art i think uh, it will appreciate with time it will appreciate more than many other investments would do but one thing we need to recognize art is not a share it's therefore if it is an investment but when you really want to liquidate it it's very difficult to do and the transaction cost of either buying an art or selling is very very high and that we need to recognize so many people i saw that uh, art funds in the few years ago and most people or at least i don't know anybody who's made money in those funds because uh, when you really want to sell it it's not an easy market to sell we'd be very interested to know any anecdotes that you may have on works that went by or works that you bought any stories so one anecdote that comes to my mind is uh, we asked we commissioned uh, Krishan Khanna to do a painting and Krishan is 90 years old and he did what is his largest painting i think it's more than 24 feet by 6 feet and it was just amazing the way that he was doing it and the interest that he had at this age and when i was talking to him about this uh, painting and what inspires him whilst that whole process was going on which was spread over almost 12 months and he often he says that often uh, he didn't know what he was painting and something else took over from him you know some higher power or something which really moved his hand and made him do the work and i think that is the essence i think of a good artist because i know of an artist who i said i liked i remember i'd gone to a gallery and i liked a particular painting and it was sold but uh, the artist was standing there so don't worry i'll make it in another week how can you produce a work of reproduce a work of art in a week that means it's only a commercial thing which is what bothers me but uh, i mean if i would ask uh, kishan khanna to Uh, really reproduce the same work that he did for us i don't think he would be able to do it so in a decision for a purchase and if you and your wife have contrary views who generally wins so i think uh, in usually in all uh, arguments my wife wins but as far as art is concerned she uh, concerned she concedes to my uh, uh, wishes as well It's time for a break but please stay tuned in for more inside stories from our very own art insider. Welcome back. Our next guest, the high spirited Sangeeta Jindal, chairperson JSW Foundation, was born into a cultivated family with an enthusiasm for the arts. Amongst her many achievements has been starting India's first magazine dedicated to Indian contemporary art. Let's find out what her personal passions are and what motivates her. Welcome Mrs. Jindal. Thank you so very much for agreeing to be a part of the show. You come from a family which is deeply entrenched in art. Uh, do you draw your inspiration from there or can you tell us a little bit about your uh, mother and your inspiration? I've lived in Calcutta and my mother especially was very very different. I lived in a very large uh, joint family and uh, we are Marwaris. So everyone in my family are talking about jewelry or other things but my mother was something someone special. She always used to tell me when I was 12 or 11 she used to say that uh, you know all this is useless you should meet creative people she always used to show me about 
Ganesh Fine, uh, Hussain. She used to take me to Shanti Niketan. So I think uh, my inspiration is is for my mom, and it is also because of the the artistic sensibilities of Kolkata. Uh, everything that you see there, the 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 bariki, the nazakat, which is there in Kolkata, and I think I learned a lot from there. I also want to, of course, touch upon um, your own passion for collecting. You have over 500 pieces of work now, and um, I think you are one of the first people that um, got art into the corporate space and showcased um, showcased a lot of it. Can you tell us about your personal art collecting journey? I think collecting is a part of an attitude. That's what I feel. I don't think it is because of the business of money. If when the business is doing very well, you have a reason for collecting. Yes. Can you tell us about maybe four of your best pieces or your favorite pieces? Um, my favorite favorite piece is uh, Krishan Kanna, okay. Girl on a Swing. My second thing which I just just love is Atul Dodia's. I have a whole like a kind of a jail which I have in Delhi. Um, Although I'm very proud that we have Anish Kapoor and Shilpa Gupta is one of my favorites. Anju Dodia is also my evergreen, I would say. You've spearheaded so many different projects in the last many years. One of the first being Art India. Um, it seems like you've always been a torchbearer and always done things which are way ahead of its time. Can you tell us a little bit about Art India and why? I think life is a journey. So I went and met uh, Dr. Baba. Dr. Jamshed Bhabha of the Tata Group. And I told him that, sir, I am not a graduate. I have no, um, um, I, I don't have any uh, kind of, um, what should I say, that I am not um, equipped. But I have huge amount of enthusiasm and I want to learn. So I used to sit in Bombay House in his waiting room and say that, sir, I just want to learn. So he said, no, you decree, you go. I said, no, you have to give me a chance. So he said, okay, you work with me. I worked with Dr. Bhabha for six months. He gave me a small place at the NCPA and I started the Jindal Arts Creative Interaction Center. And I can tell you how Art India started. We would love to know how Art India started. So Vijaya Bhai told, I called her Vijaya Bhai. She said, Ki Sangeeta, by which time I was 24 years old, 24, maybe, maybe 26 years old. And uh, she said that, look, there is no rule book. You just be with me. And then I asked for it, I wanted an assistant. So finally I got Anupa. She said, Sangeeta, you know the difference is that there is no vehicle of what is happening all over India. Why don't you start a magazine? So I said, will you start it? She said, yes, you can start it. So she said, will you fund it? So I said, um, okay, tell me. I, I asked Sajjan and Sajjan said, how much money will you lose? So I said, okay, I'll ask. And she said about four lakh rupees a year. So he said, okay, four lakh rupees a year. I know that you, it, will, uh, it will be worthless, but not more. So we founded a business development manager, which is our Partho Chaudhary. So as of now, since there, we are break even now. And I don't even now, I don't even see the accounts. We see you as a trustee of Indian contemporary culture. Of course, it's not contemporary only because you've done so much with our heritage sites. What is your vision for the future for India? My vision is that India is just about starting. I feel that uh, very few people have access here. There are very few avenues of knowledge. So I think I have lots and lots to do. We hope you enjoyed the show today. On the upcoming episode, we explore the role young collectors play in the contemporary art world. Do write to us on artinsider at ndtv.com. Hope to see you next week.